Hello, welcome back to Inaudible, the podcast that's impossible to listen to. And doesn't ever change. <laughs> yes, it's the same every week. Wait, that's a but different But we have podcast. a new format. That's changed. Well, it, we do have a brand new format because I'm going to start with news. Oh. What? Yes. News? <laughs> uh, because, of course, you may Well, have... it was number 151 in the Pokedex. <laughs> it was technically before Mewtwo, but news was meant to have... Or was created after, anyway. Yeah. yeah, I never really understood that. And then it released Supermassive Black Hole, and mm. etc. <laughs> and then it became a wonderful breakfast. Y- yes. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Um, <laughs> I was definitely racking my brain trying to think of something else, but nothing. <laughs> well, the news was about um, Barry Chuckle. Did you hear this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. which um, is oh, very dear. sad. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, 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 dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And f- it unfortunately, means we won't get to do our crossover with them now, was he? Because uh, oh. that was that's the only thing. We literally us back said now. it like weeks ago, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> you oh. caused this. I yeah, know. Well, I, I've been thinking about this. I think if one of we have to fight to the death, and one of us wins, and whoever wins <laughs> gets to do the new Chuckle Brothers with with, with Paul. Well, that, I don't know because works. you you were always the taller of the two of us. So I always saw you more of the Paul, and I was more of the Barry. Oh, so I yeah. think I've kind of lost already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Does that no, make me the, un- the, no, uh, it's Paul. the relatively unknown four- third brother? Yeah, yeah, you're you're in the van with, with all the shoes. We've been through this. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> if you don't watch Digimon World, Richard, it's your own fault. <laughs> you're in the van with Stan. Yeah. God fucking damn it. <laughs> um, so that was news number one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we we joke obviously, but it's very sad because we we like we like them. So, yeah, yeah, there we are. It's it's weird. Like I remember enjoying the chuckle. I remember enjoying Chuckle Vision, but not actually enjoying watching it. So, well, Does that so make you, any like, sense? No. <laughs> you you found it boring, but you found it funny. No, I. And, uh, what they were doing wasn't it really exciting, but I mean, I enjoyed watching it because you know I like I like Barry and Paul, but it was just always so awkward. It was the nineties. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's the same reason why I don't watch anything like The Inbetweeners, just because I don't really like awkward comedy like that. Mm, right. I don't know. Maybe mm. it's just me. I oh, did enjoy them them. when they did their stint for Hitman Absolution. Oh, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> that was very. Should have done more of that when they had the chance. Mm. But, oh. Well, in happier news, mm? there is a new Digimon film being made, Ozzy. I saw an image. I didn't know whether it was true or not. Is it the image of Matt and Ty? I saw an image of a sort of older Ty where he's sort of got the goggles right on top of the head rather than on the forehead. Yeah, (laughs) hang on, let me send you this thing. There we are. These are the the people that release all the DVDs and stuff in the UK, Mango UK. Uh, So it's an official Uh, source. So yeah, yeah. it's called Digimon Adventure, the movie. It's not like the, uh, the, the Tesco value news no no <laughs> it's wow they look like exactly the same news. character oh well rich wouldn't know much about try would he no i was we've, just we've had an we've had an incarnation between classic digimon and these ones as well oh ah, okay. yeah so they'll be 22 years old they'll be they'll be adults imagine being as old as 22 <laughs> so, i know uh, right <laughs> so yeah uh <laughs> It will be out at some point, so that's good. So that'll be, be like six, seven years after Try. Yeah. It would literally be, they'll be syncing it up to modern day. Oh, yeah. Digimon Thanksgiving 2018 special meeting in Odaiba. No, that's when the news came to light. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was skimming. Shush. But look, a number of staff members from the original series will be working on the project, including character designer Katsuaki Nakatsuru, monster designer Kenji Watanabe, and producer Hiromi Seki. Okay. So it's all like the original guys, the old band back together. So the, the old band do try. Yeah, there's no there's no news on a release date, but it's it's good. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, it's not yeah. as boring as the try was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try was nostalgic. It wasn't. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Do, do 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 it. Bring out the um resuscitator. We might need to get Rich back now. Well, hmm? we'll what? get him back yeah. with this link I've just put in the chat of a man from Taiwan who's put eleven phones on his bicycles so he can play Pokemon Go all day. 
<laughs> Brilliant. And he's known affectionately as Uncle Pokemon. Oh, he's a, he's a Pokemon, but he's Professor Oak. That's what I was literally about to say. They should have called him Professor Oak. Hmm. That would have been the perfect nickname. Or just yeah. the Pokemon Professor. <laughs> Yeah. Because so, Oak travels uh, around on a bike as well. Um, except when it's not time to use that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, only, only when you're crashing it outside of Ash's mum's house ready for, well. <laughs> <laughs> Filling up the Pokedex, if you will. The, yes. <laughs> Delia Ketchum's personal Pokedex was filled long ago. Oh, God. <laughs> Where do you think he sent Ash away? They both, they both conspira- conspiracized it. Conspiracized? Yeah. I'm sorry, but word. filling up the Pokedex as a euphemism for sex is probably the most amazing <laughs> thing I've heard all week. <laughs> that You're might very have, welcome. You might need a reference to that in the title somewhere. Yeah. Filling up the Pokedex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. oh man, I'm the worst. I, I do like how, um, yeah, I do like how on this article about a man with eleven phones attached to his bike, so he can play a game on them. The last sentence of the article is: "The game has faced criticism with suggestions Pokemon Go increases the risk of death or injury through distraction." Really, <laughs> you don't say. Well, so stemming off of the uh, the mobile game. Crashes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, stemming off of the mobile game thing. Ozzy, have you been playing Power Rangers Legacy Wars? The fuck has that got to do with Pokemon? No. No? They, they I... banged on about it a lot when they were doing the Hyper RPG. Oh, far are we in? Eight Power Rangers making notes of role play. Oh. Um, speaking of Pokemon, actually, I was, I was thinking about um, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, or I was reading something about it and it made me think yeah. about it. Um, awesome. Because I, I often slag off Gen 7, but I just... I think it's worth pointing I really out. Like Gen 7. I want. I. I think it's worth pointing out two things that were I really liked about it, just to kind of balance it. Number one, mm. it's really really funny. It's re- the text and the dialogue in that game had me <laughs> laughing out loud more than I can remember a lot of Pokemon games in the past. So they did that I really mean, well. Like a lot of the animations with the characters as well. Like they're a very lively bunch. Yeah. No, I just find that annoying. No, uh, like it was, okay. I just think the writing was really good. Okay. <laughs> it was like in in Gen Six when all your rivals, quote unquote rivals, would show up, and you'd be like, "Oh my god, these guys!" It's like when you know if you've ever had that at school where someone is like you're someone's best friend, but they're not, you're, they're not your best friend. It was like one of those. Oh, did you of, mean my entire life? Um, mm. Sure, if you like. <laughs> um, yeah, I did, don't like that. It's rubbish. Serena mm. was was decent though, although we. You kind Serena of, is bay. You kind of ended up. I felt. I felt really bad for Serena because she desperately wanted to be, like the the best trainer. And every time she felt like she was getting somewhere, you just beat her. And eventually, she just gave up. <laughs> yep. It's was, it was like you're the rival. You're the evil rival who just ruins her dreams. <laughs> but anyway, oh, um, the other thing about Usum, I can't really remember mm-hmm. Sun and Moon that well, but I remember Usum had some bloody <laughs> difficult battles in it. Yeah, it, yeah, it was the well, first. Okay. It was the first. The first time in a long time I've really struggled with battles in a Pokemon game. Necrozma. So, I haven't actually got to that bit yet, <laughs> but Have some of not? the some of the totem battles oh, are bloody difficult. <laughs> yes, you're, um, you're you're in for a treat then. <laughs> the totem wishy washy. Um, God, yeah, even that one was difficult. That's quite an early one, wasn't it? Yeah, I always remember the the um, the Marowak had some like amazing double battle strategy that I just I was like, what? What is this? I couldn't. couldn't yeah, that. It's like there's almost no point in playing the original Sun and Moon now. Oh no! No, that that's the worst thing about Gen Seven is that it only yeah. needed to be two games, and it was the two games they released after the first two. Yeah, yeah. money, 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 dum. Yeah, money, money, dum. I money, swear to God, if you mention year. Abba again, I will stab you. Stabber. <laughs> 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 you are hey, forgiven for that one I pun. I stab you. <laughs> so, well, well, Mamma Mia has been I, playing at work, so I'm fucking sick of it. Uh, I just thought you were going into that classic sh- song, Stabber. Mr. Loverman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stabber, Stabber. Stabber, Stabber. 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 Hey. <laughs> oh. Should we talk about Doctor well, Who? Doctor Who. Yeah. I suppose we should. Uh, I suppose it should be probably better. I'm still Last asking, time on Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor Reeve here. Oh. Paddle-a-dum. Paddle-a-dum. 
Uh, last week's That's theme all we can get away with without copyright. <laughs> last week's theme tune was provided by the KLF, known as the Time Lords or the Jam. Mm. Ah, yeah, Doctor or the, Notorious. the Justified Agents of Moo Moo. Uh, I was obsessed with that song for a couple of years. I, I yeah. remember you were. It's a good song. It's a good band as it's, well. It's how Mr. Bennett, the art teacher, always remembered me. <laughs> <laughs> because whenever he saw me, he'd just start singing Doctor. Hey. 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 <laughs> yeah. I really hope that was out of time on the recording. Oh, Most it will probably. Be. That's the one point you'll actually do editing to make sure yeah, we're sure out it, of time. Yeah, yeah. If not, you can fix it, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, this this time I think maybe just a, just the uh, the intro sting and then the cliffhanger noise at the end. We'll switch it up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> not the <laughs> intro sting. <laughs> What's that from? Was it that? I I I thought he was doing. What Darude Sandstorm? Yes, I was just trying to think what that song was, like, but I didn't have a chance to ask. I know it's like not everybody ever tells you what it's called. It's almost like there's one of the lost songs on the internet that nobody knows one, the name of. One of the, one of the happiest moments of my YouTube hmm. career is when someone asked me what one of the bits of music on one of my EU4 time lapse videos was, and I could answer <laughs> the rude sandstorm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> so either that or All Star by Smash Mouth. Yes. Uh, have you seen uh, Steamed Did Hands but it's All Star? <laughs> Oh, I think you've shown us this, yeah. Oh, have I? <laughs> I? I literally think if you scroll up far enough in this Discord text, it'll appear again. Oh. It was back in the early days of us doing it as a trio. Ah. There's Still the people. Go. No, yeah, no, <laughs> that, I found that, it. That couple with their pasties. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trip down. Oh, yeah, there it is. Steam Towns with Soul Star. Yeah, anyway, back you... in March. Yeah. <laughs> This is brilliant, by the way. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, should we talk about Doctor Who? <laughs> oh, what, are we doing that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Dalek. Set yes, Dalek. last time we came on, uh, we left the World <laughs> War pardon? 3. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Don't know what you I were coming on. I corrected myself. You yeah. can't pull me up on that one. Um, but let's not talk about pulling. Um, so, it's set in the distant future the of 2012. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hmm. This this one you don't get any kind of mention about the Olympics because I think this one was before it had been announced. Yeah, oh really? But wow. then by the time of series two it had been announced. Yeah. So they decided to mix up the whole fear of her anyway. We'll get there. <laughs> so <laughs> I know um last time was you you mentioned about how you've been watching a few reactions to Doctor Who and, and I, I've been, I I do over the times, yeah. Mm, I, I so I went away and watched a few reactions to Doctor Who as well. And oh. I think I think literally the one I watched must have been one of the ones you watched because he said, Oh, I hate manicures. That's an American accent. Oh. Um, well, I don't know, because, what? <laughs> oh, I hate manicures. <laughs> I've noticed a load of them mentioning it. Uh, but yeah, um it was interesting watching people who didn't know anything about Doctor Who watch this episode because they didn't know what a Dalek was. Yeah, so they didn't feel the excitement. The big reveal, which by the way is an amazing reveal, mm. but it's so disappointing that they had to call the episode Dalek. And I understand why they had to do that to make people watch it. Yeah. Yeah. But that reveal is amazing. Can you imagine if they just called it Metaltron? Yeah. <laughs> Would have been a great and moment. Like, or the and... secret of the vault. <laughs> That would have been a good title. But would this, I mean, would this episode have been as good if it wasn't for the old fans? This is literally just an old fan episode, isn't it? It is introducing yes. Daleks to the new fans, but if you didn't sort of care about the Daleks, it's not as hypey. Yeah, definitely. I guess, yeah. Did we, had we ever seen a Dalek show off that much firepower before as in like it literally just goes into a corridor full of people and really no, calmly efficiently so, murders no. them all <laughs> yeah i think o that... older daleks you could get away with just throwing a towel over their heads yeah and they were pretty fast yeah well don't forget this that those are the daleks before the time war this is uh, a time war dalek ah uh, yes yeah and that, i think that that was what was what's so exciting about it as a fan is that it's the first time we saw holy shit the daleks are actually something to be feared <laughs> yeah not just uh, not just a random enemy kind of thing um they are just like the poster child there's actually a reason to fear them yeah oh fear her mm -hmm. uh so yeah we 
Or did we get some more information about the time war as well? The fact that the doctor said he yeah. was in the war and all that. Because I, yeah. I remember asking you... And he you probably back. mentions that it was the Daleks he was fighting because it was it's sort of like, mm. I wiped you out to end it or so, something. Yeah. 10,000 ships all burning. Yeah, I watched it happen. I made it happen. <laughs> Which is such an interesting little line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, that can't have been important. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get it. Yeah, but there's that bit where he kind of goes, um, "What's the nearest city? Salt Lake City. Population one million. All dead. All dead. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 great. I love it. It's a it's definitely a fan favorite, isn't it? I think it's it's, it's a very good episode. The height yeah. of episode acting chop sort of thing. It's when you mm. first notice he's more than just this brooding Goofball. sort of quirky guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He can do serious. <laughs> he can do angry. Because oh, it's really it's the first time that you actually see Eccleston be serious, isn't it, as the Doctor? Like, he's been well, like... He gets a little bit serious for like five minutes now and then. Yeah, but this is the but, one where you see him like, oh shit, this is the Doctor scared. This, and yeah. angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scangry. That's Scangry. <laughs> or aired. <laughs> I think Scangry's better. <laughs> scangry. It sounds a bit like a, a disease or something. Oh, oh got we've some, got Scangry. I got yes. Scangry between my legs. Or like a new new type <laughs> of like dance music or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here they are with a new Scangry hit. <laughs> the latest YouTube sensation. <laughs> it's the Scangries. <laughs> it's like angry skanking. Oh, oh wow, no. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Hmm. But yeah, I I really enjoy that episode. But it does introduce us to the uh, the one stupid worst, character, yes, the worst ever companion, Adam. Because yeah. it's yeah. kind of it doesn't really make sense to me why they they bring him in like as I guess an optional companion that they I might think you know I know why they so him that if there. well yeah because it kind of seems to me like you know oh if this guy's received well we can bring him back later on he's another kind of person but then he's not nice <laughs> and he's no, just I, annoyed and he gets think, killed off effectively i think what it was is and spoilers for the end of the next episode but it was the whole i only take the best and i have rose yeah you kind of get it to might s- have just been to show that not everyone's cut out for it some people will use it to their own benefit exactly yeah that literally was the reason you get to see that the, why the doctor doesn't just pick anyone to come yeah. with him because yeah. he doesn't want to take Adam at all does he <laughs> no yeah. he's your boyfriend not anymore as the, as the line goes it's like <laughs> my impression of Rose <laughs> flawless it was like Billy Piper was actually here wow oh she's gone now oh. yeah she's off she's off <laughs> bye thank god I, w- I wanted to diss her to her face why is, why her, is she why is she, why is she gone <laughs> off without saying anything because she wants to you should have. You, <laughs> you're just taking audio. I took. I took a sip her. of tea just as I was saying that, and I nearly <laughs> lost it. Thanks to you, Rich. <laughs> you're bloody welcome. <laughs> I think I deserved yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Are you in the bad Is that like a victory part? sip that went wrong? Oh. No, it was. It was. I don't know if you heard the slight echo as I was saying it. It was slowly work its way towards my mouth, like I was hiding behind. It's kind of one of those jokes that doesn't really work well on a, on an audio medium. <laughs> yeah. Well done. It's a joke you could have been doing two episodes ago, possibly. Yes. Yeah. I'll bear it in mind for the hundredth episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yeah. Um, have we got yeah, anything else? Uh, uh, oddly enough, Dalek. Adam actually comes back. Does he? Yeah, in, in, in the, the, the uh, Prisoners or... of Time comic book series. Ah, uh, yes. I th- oh, yes. Okay. I knew that. As the main villain. The way you said it made oh. it sound like he came back for real. <laughs> uh, yes. He, he Doesn't he get angry ab- about what the Doctor did and yeah. dedicates his life to bringing him down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, that actually sounds a little bit interesting. We'll have to... Oh, they've got to make him interesting it. somehow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to do that is through comic book media. Comic book villainry. Oh. So. Oh, okay. Gong lame. Oh. What's gong lame? We, we, uh, oh, yes. We the long it. game. Often called, and by often, I mean Ozzy said it a couple of weeks ago, often called the weakest 
of the Link. series. Yes, I would agree with that. Yes, uh, so would I. <laughs> I, I mean, ne- and <laughs> I'd, I'd never thought about it until you mentioned it the other a couple of weeks ago, Ozzy. But when you said it, I was like, we went through the episodes, didn't we? And I went, oh yeah, actually it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has a few <clears throat> nice lines in there, but that still doesn't quite save it from just being a bit boring. Yeah, like, mm. uh, I seem to remember this was, like, the one episode of Series 1 that I actually missed seeing live. Oh. Because oh. I wasn't at home for it, so I didn't actually see it until uh, much, much later. So I don't really have any oh, connection okay. to this episode, so I don't really like it that much. Just kind of boring. Yeah, no. <laughs> you probably wouldn't if you'd have watched it live. <laughs> yeah. I think all I remembered from it until, like... Rewatches was that Simon Pegg was in it and that it, it had the Mighty Jaguar Fest and the Holy Hunter Jurassic Max Road mm-hmm. Because I, I spent ages trying to learn how to say that because it was in a book. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <clears throat> like learning the name of that card. that planet, um, Clom. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, it's kind of. Not a lot yeah. really happened. It's really just. To show you that Adam is not a good companion. Yeah. (laughs) But but it does also sort of set set up satellite five. Yeah. For the final, yeah. It could have just been the opening cruel. We would have been fine. (laughs) Wait, I've crossed the streams. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, that even that's a self reference in itself. (laughs) What are you doing? You've done a freeway stream cross. Oh. (laughs) A trident. I'm pretty sure that's Ooh. a section on uh, Uborn, uh, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Three-way stream cross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like something <laughs> Donald Trump would watch. <laughs> oh. oh. And Richard, obviously. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that. You've got, i got Tumblr for that shit. <laughs> yes, my sister did say. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> Cheyenne said she saw you on some kind of site. Tinder. Tinder, that's it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't use internet dating. I get more confused. <laughs> Should try Grinder. It's more your thing. I've, ne- I've, n- I've never been confident in any of that. You think I have? <laughs> I, I, I've got to admit, I did, I did try some of that once, but I just suffered from exactly the same problem I have in real life, so it was a complete waste of time. <laughs> so, you can't talk to people. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's how I met Gemma. I met, uh, I met Gemma through Tinder. Yeah. Maybe I'll try and meet her as well then. <laughs> <laughs> so, Father's Day. Father's Day. An interesting we, episode. We skipped straight to... Are we not rating them anymore then? <laughs> oh yeah, should we rate them? Dalek, should we wait? eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly not. Because it rhymes with extermin. <laughs> extermin, eight. Extermin, Aaron. <laughs> extermin of who core. I could see it being better from the eyes of someone who knows who a Dalek is, but as I've said, watching yeah. reactions, I've noticed that if you don't know what a Dalek is, mm. it doesn't have as much hype. Definitely. So yeah, I'd, I'd say probably eight, but it could be better... If you know what the Daleks are, I mean, like, it kind of works in two ways. Because if you know what a Dalek is, then you're seeing it through the Doctor's eyes. But if you don't know what a Dalek is, you're seeing it through Rose's eyes and seeing it wreak havoc for the first time. Yeah. So it kind of works no matter how much you know about Doctor Who. But everyone seems to think it's R- an R two D two thing from what the reactions I've seen. Yeah. Everyone's like, "What is this? Some kind of R two D two thing?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when it starts wreaking havoc, everyone's like, "Oh my god." No, not normally from what I've seen. No. Fine. They just see it as like a dome creature that kind of looks less budgetary than most of the other things they've yeah. seen. <laughs> I think if you pr- probably if you got an English person that wasn't into Do- or a British person that wasn't into Doctor Who to watch Dalek for the first time, they'd at least recognise it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's part of our culture and that. So to summarise, I would give it a nine because it's my personal review, not uh, <laughs> not the review of people who don't know what a Dalek is. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'd give it a 9 as well, actually, not an 8. I think I'd probably stick with the 8. Oh, controversial. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more about I this ju- later. I, I just have other episodes this series that I see as a 9 and a 10. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, number 9, Father's Day. Number 8. Which is my rate- rating of 9. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I withdraw my comment. Going with that... 
Not in the right order, that. So the, Father's Day, the first time we're introduced to Pete Tyler. Yes. So, the thing I remember most about this episode, generally, is just how <laughs> creepy it is. The vase. The whole... Yeah. The, whole the vase. The, I always... Just, when I think of Father's Day, the first thing that pops into my head is, like, that violin incidental music that was just like... The whole time. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's what I remember, anyway. Unsettling episode. Yeah, that's the word. I think it's, it's our very fir- good, first though. time we've dealt with tiny whiny type. Yeah. Things, Going back probably. on your own time stream. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it starts from the very beginning, doesn't it? This just straight away you end up with like two versions of the Rose and the Doctor in the same place yeah. and all that kind of Within stuff. Within the yeah. first five minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's the absolute last time we can be here. Really? Are there no windows you can go and poke yourselves out of? <laughs> They could but probably then again, sit you end in, up having like a red dwarf they, situation and just <laughs> They could probably sit in the church and view it, because if he was meant to have died on the corner literally right next to the church. Yeah. <laughs> and you could see the car reappearing from the church window. I just um, pictured it was yeah. like the bit in The Last Jedi when Ray's at the mirror and there's just like a, a long queue of her. Yeah. The doctor's like, this is the last time we can be here, and he turns around and just sees a load of them in the back. Oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. Uh, then he looks across the road and he sees a different regeneration with a different <laughs> companion. Yeah. And David Turner just waves like, hello! <laughs> it's, it's just sort of like teaching that companion how not to do it. <laughs> right, you see this idiot over here? Watch what he does. <laughs> see that guy with the big ears? Don't do what he does. It's Matt Smith uh, with a giant chin. <laughs> or nose. Oh. What did David Tennant have? Sideburns? Look at him with the big yeah. coat. Coat, yeah. Sand big shoes. coat. Yeah. <laughs> Converses is Versailles. Oh, conversely. Uh, so yeah, and it's it's time timey wimey shit. So there's like the bit where the doctor gets in a half and runs off to the TARDIS, and he finds that it's an empty box. It's not there. Yeah, yeah. and it, it really does a good job of making you understand that this is actually a really really bad thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's a good episode, and we get more I, of that great family stuff that I like Russell T Davis so much. I for. was I was yeah. gonna say it's another episode that shows that Rose's family is pretty much the best thing about the Rose arc. Yeah. <laughs> she, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. To each their own. <laughs> but as no, we know, I mean, I the family the are fan. really good. Yeah. Or the family and friends. <laughs> yeah. The side characters. Hmm. What else? So do yeah, have? I would give that episode an eight. Ooh. Well, yeah, that would, I, no, I think I prefer Father's Day to Dalek actually. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I give Long Game a five. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Uh... See, we even <laughs> forgot about it when we were thinking of rating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I give it like a three or somewhat. <laughs> oh shit! I probably give it a five or a six. I'm giving it a five just because of Simon Pegg. Oh, <laughs> I think I'd give it the free just for that. That's oh, worth wow. at least three points, but the rest. Yeah, but of it's it, also got uh, Tams and Greg in it from Black Books. Oh so. yeah, Greg. Okay. I don't like changing my score halfway through that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll stick with the free. I will go back to Farrow's Day and say the thing I don't like about it though is the Reapers. Really? Because it was pulled off well here, but the. They never really gave any kind of explanation again afterwards. Yeah. And then they kind of just forgot about it and decided to come up with a whole new timey wimey logic for their show. Yeah. Yeah. That's the... If they'd have stuck to the whole, you can't touch it. Sleeping dragon. You can't touch Mm. your previous self. (laughs) And stuff like that. (laughs) Yeah, the Blinovich limitation effect. Mm. Mm. If you want to get technical, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd probably give it a nine. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I really like that one. <laughs> so now we get, uh, quite possibly my favourite episodes of the series. Are we? How many are we doing this time round? I don't know. I don't know whether to. Well, do you want to? Do you want to? Stop oh no, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do empty child and doctor dances this time. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll leave the final for the final yeah. three. The yeah. final for the final. Yeah. The final. F- we could probably do the final three, born again, and then. Well, let's worry about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So, empty child and the doctor dances. The child that is empty. 
the first outing of uh, Mr. Stephen Moffat. Ah, yes. Minimum of fat. Ah. Well, well, well. That's well. harsh. Well? What do you mean I don't harsh? get why everybody hates on him so much. No, no, no. I was, I was more thinking that his first technical Doctor Who outing was the Children in Need special with Ron Atkinson. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. The you Curse te- of Fatal te- Death. That's the one. I was trying to think of the name. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna Lumley as the Doctor. Yes. Yeah, that was technically his first outing. But yeah, I'll give it to you. This is his first canonical outing. Yeah. It's, it's canon for me, damn it. <laughs> I mean, up until the series was rebooted, that technically was canon. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's, it's very true. <laughs> well, didn't they try to do like an animated one with Richard E. Grant being the yeah. Oh, they did, didn't doctor? they? Yeah. yeah. Shal- Shalker. Scream of Shalker. Yeah, Scream of Shalker. That was in like 2005 as well. I think that was that, that might I think that might have been two thousand and three, because it was like a, a year or two before the revival. Yeah. It was definitely beforehand because I remember wondering how they were going to fit Richard E. Grant into the new one, <laughs> whether he was going to regenerate or something. Yeah. Hmm. Well. But yes. Um. MC Child and Doctor dances. Yes. Thoughts. Yes, I have. Yes. <laughs> I like um, it. <laughs> yeah, really good. Like, still annoying, I think. I think this just this last half of the series... Is really is when good. It, yeah, this is when it picks up, sort of thing. Yeah, Father's Day through to the end is really, really good. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, it introduces one of the all-time fan favourite characters, Captain Jack Harkness. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> good old Captain Jack. And it's... It's it was... Probably- was it our first properly creepy episode? I, I think, think it, so, yeah. Because I didn't really think... The closest before was The Unquiet Dead, but that wasn't really a creepy episode. It just no. had zombies in it. <laughs> yeah. That was Whereas, just a Victorian episode. Whereas, Are You My Mummy? It's just something... It's just so, so fundamentally creepy about children. Uh, yeah. I think this one was written <laughs> intentionally to be creepy, yeah. 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 <laughs> I always remember the scene in the hospital when the doctor's checking their injuries and he's like, he's like they're the same injuries. How can it be? And uh, uh, what's his face from... Uh, I, I don't believe it. You could just say that to him, Ted. I don't believe it. Yeah, I can't remember his yeah. name. Um, yeah. uh, Victor Meldrew. <laughs> That's his real name. Um, he's, he says, you know, even down to the scar on the back of the hand and it just has the shot of him looking at the scar on the back of his hand. Oh, <laughs> it's really good. Really well creeped. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Three spooky yeah, five. I know he's Dr. Constantine. Hang on. I'm looking him up. Um, Richard Wilson. That's the one, yeah. That's the one. That's also, the one. fun fact the scar on the back of the hand is the same scar that's in um, the Doctor's daughter. Oh. I can't remember oh. what scar that was. Yeah. How was no, that? I can't. What was, what was that? <laughs> How did when that the happen? DNA cut, when the, when the Doctor's hand is taken in oh, and gets yeah. the, uh, the mark it's... on the back of his head, it's the exact same scar. Oh, well. <laughs> Fancy Which that. means it's probably the same technology. But why would... No. Because the scar is an injury that the boy had. Yeah. That was replicated. Yeah, I know. It's weird. The weird stretch. Is it, uh, isn't it just an Easter egg? <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> Not everything yeah. has to have a universe explanation. Really? This is Doctor Who we're talking about? I suppose. It's not like, Star-, sec- it's not like Star Wars where every single background actor has an entire biography. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Like, up until Disney bought the franchise, literally every single piece of Star Wars media was canon. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Like, every single one. It's just, ugh. Well, they have, they have tried to make the, the expanded Doctor Who universe more canon now. Do you mean the Who-niverse? The Who-niverse, yeah. The, but the... the, the nice see nice see zoo The Who-niverse well, is... Yeah as bad as the worst of the expanded universe can be really like sometimes you look something up on uh like the the unofficial wiki or something and it'll tell you oh yes the daleks were created on earth by the forerunners who took them and you're like no this isn't canon <laughs> like it just takes something that was in one comic that came with a breakfast cereal and like yeah <laughs> and it featured the bloody um movie doctor from the 60s yeah <laughs> Wait, what? The, the Peter oh, Cushing, Peter Cushing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a second to think of his name. <laughs> was that actually, like, one of the... Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, for for a laugh, <laughs> go on, like, the... What was it? The TARDIS wiki, I think. 
and look up like the Cybermen or the Daleks and look at how many different origin stories there are. It's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Big, especially with the Cybermen, because one of the big Finnish Cybermen stories was used as the basis for some of the origin story with the Peter Capaldi Cybermen episode. Mm, yeah. yeah. And breathe. <clears throat> yeah. Go away now, TV. I was on that page recently, so yes, <laughs> I remember. Because <laughs> I was, I was, I was, um, re- I was trying to find out how this uh, that big spaceship from the end of Capaldi's run came into the whole Mondas thing, uh, um, and I. I I could not find a conclusive answer. <laughs> no, no. I, I think I meant to assume that it eventually happens, and that's all that we need to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Spare parts, the audio uh, question. Yeah. We all, yeah, we also get in the empty child. Back to the review, we get to we get um, one of my favourite lines of the series, which uh, where they talk about the fact that the the thing they're chasing is mauve. Mauve and not dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Into universally recognized symbol of danger. Symbol for Are you absolutely really sure it does mean changing red. the bulb? Yeah. I butchered the quote, but you get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Step up to red alert. <laughs> so, are you absolutely sure it does mean changing the bulb? Yeah, you, you just did that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but just... it's a good joke, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Lower I think the blast that's a shield. record, though, repeating the same joke twice in 10 seconds. Yeah. Mm hmm. It does, remind me of, tonight, it does remind Sorry. me of another Red Dwarf bit where the cat suggests lowering the, the blast shields and Crichton says, an excellent plan, sir, with only two minor draw bra- drawbacks. One, we don't have any blast shields. And two, we don't have any blast shields. I realise that's only one drawback, but I thought it was such an important one, it was worth mentioning twice. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Do we have any... I'm never, well, we'll get to that in biscuits. We'll get to that in biscuits. I'll write it down now so I don't forget. Oh, shit. Okay. Um... But yeah, what else can we say about Emp's Child and Dr. Dances? Oh, the, the banana fact, the banana grove. Uh, Bananas are good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. There's a lot of that's a lot of good chemistry, isn't there? Yeah. Good I, also, can I just say, I love the um, ah, chemistry. Uh, I love the uh, the resolution to the cliffhanger. Yes. Go to your yeah. room. <laughs> I am very cross with you. Thank God that worked. Those have been terrible last words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems a little bit like a cop out. But it works perfectly. Yeah, because it, it fits thematically. IMO, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and it sets up a scene, a very good bit of creepy scenage later on when uh, they've got the tape of him saying "mummy," ah, and then suddenly they it. realise that the tape has stopped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's um, <laughs> oh. good. It's very. I good. love. I love. That's one thing I love that Moffat Perfect. does, where like he'll do something in the background that you'll you'll notice on the second watch through on the first one you don't realize it's a thing such as yeah. well like in this episode that yeah. you can actually hear the tape stop and then the tape will start to flick uh, around like yes. but you won't so notice before. it until the doctor points it out i got to watch and that then again the camera cuts <laughs> to it sort of thing and yeah. um the typewriter yes where the kid who was Type, you can still hear the typewriter in the background, even though the kid who was on the typewriter turned around to listen. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's little things like that that you don't notice first time round. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Moffat is very I good at doing particularly that. Particularly with this, the, this two-parter anyway. Now that yeah. we're mentioning it, we can notice it a bit more. But Yeah. Um, okay. And it also brings on Jack as a permanent companion, which is awesome. Yes. Probably my favourite male companion. Yes. Although... I like Amy some and Rory, the... damn it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I like... Okay, I like Amy and Rory as a duo, but yeah. they're not really good separately. No. So if I'm going by solo male companion, Jack's probably my favourite. <laughs> Agreed. Um, probably even including classics, though I've been watching some of Hartnell times and Ian's starting to step up his game. So. <laughs> oh, did you ever read The Wife in Space? Yes. She always used to say they should have called the show Ian. <laughs> yes. It was ba- it was basically the prelogue to reactions, but it was a blog rather than a reaction thing. Okay. And yeah, it husband, was a, it was a guy who was the a husband hun- forced his wife yeah. to watch every every oh including the Telly so Snap episode. So he was a, he was a massive fan of Telly Doctor Snap Who, obviously. Episodes. Yes. He's a massive fan obviously and she wasn't at all like she'd watched the new series and that was it. Um, right. But they both, both of their backgrounds was like TV production, so she had an interest in it anyway. 
just kind of see how they made it and yeah some of the stuff she comes out with is brilliant <laughs> doctor <laughs> comma who <laughs> Oh, it is a brilliant read. I recommend it, Rich. It's partially right. what inspired me to do classic Doctor Who reactions. Ah, okay. Where I force Ray to watch the classics. <laughs> you watch. You force your wife to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really say that anymore because Ray's going to be moving into a house with Michaela, possibly having a kid. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, he's growing up. Blimey. Um, I know. Well, that was a depressing thought. Uh, yeah. So I'd give it a nine. <laughs> yes, yeah. I would give it a solid Agree. nine. Agre. Agre. Agro. Give it a solid nining. Oh. Not nine iron. Signing. <laughs> right. Cool. So yeah. And to, is that where we are with review? Who? Yeah, that's the review for new. Next time, the <laughs> last three. <laughs> that's the review for new. You. Okay, what was what was what was in the biscuit section then? Yeah, let's open the biscuit tin. Is there, is there any red dwarf news? That's what I was gonna. Oh up. yes, um, they're re-releasing there is. series oh. one to eight in HD Blu-ray, four K. Oh. oh, see, I never, I never really understand things like that because they were recorded in SD, so you just watch it an upscaled thing. Really, I've got them on DVD. <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was more thinking you need Red Dwarf, but... <laughs> well, um, some Red Dwarf is better than no Red Dwarf. Yes. So I haven't... What are they on now? 13? Is is that going to be the new one? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because I know they wanted I to um, do that live show, stage show, didn't they? Yeah. I don't um, ever remember actually seeing the end of Series 12. Oh. I know I did. I can't remember it much. I, I, rem- I, remember, I remember the last series was really good. Because <laughs> I the, the remember whole, it's good. I just don't remember the, it. The, th- the thing is with with Red Dwarf now, it's kind of at that stage where every time I sit down to watch an episode when it comes on, I I just I'm just worried that it's not going to be good because I don't <laughs> I don't want it to horribly die like it kind of did on its original run. Yeah. Um. I just I want to. You know, I it, enjoyed it, but yeah, yeah, but it wasn't the it wasn't as I good mean, as I just because I was a fan of Red Dwarf anyway, so I I'd enjoy anything Red Dwarf. Yeah, really. D- ditto. But you've got to admit that it got steadily worse (laughs) yeah and that's what i just worry about now it's gonna end up as like this like dead husk of a show with aging stars that you know people watch it go oh (laughs) why don't they just let it die of actors exactly (laughs) yeah but yeah at least with Crichton, you won't be able to tell because he's got the makeup (laughs) (laughs) the rest of them you can just see the age on their faces yeah um so Danny John George and Robert Llewellyn have confirmed that the 13th series would be made in 2019, but that's all oh, the news we've oh. got. Oh, so we're still going to have to wait for 2019 to even happen? Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, no, no, huh. no more news. Okay. Interesting. I only ever saw the first four episodes of series uh, 11, so I didn't see Crisis or Can of Worms. Yeah. And I only <clears> remember <throat> seeing Cured... Yeah, I only saw one episode of series eleven. Series eleven. Oh, series twelve. Well, you're sorry. a fan. You're you're a red dwarf hipster. <laughs> <laughs> you only like the classics. My God. How but, do but, I not remember any of these? Do I feel a binge watch coming up in the near future? Damn right. Actually, I got shit to watch, to guys. That. Yeah. <laughs> so can I ask ask a question to you people who've studied media studies? <laughs> um, oh, dear. When they have a production code, does that mm. is that just the order they made them in? Or does it imply that it was kind of the order of the series? You know, pr- production code one is meant to be episode one, two is two, and so on. I think the production code is the order they were filmed in. Okay. Yeah, because if you go on the TARDIS wikia... The Doctor Who episodes have got production order and televised order when yeah, you've got previous um, and next at the bottom. So yeah, because we go before, back to series... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, before Empty Child and the Doctor Dances, they filmed the long game, but Favre's Day technically aired between them. Oh, so, so just to explain, I was looking at the list of Red Dwarf episodes here. Um, mm-hmm. So, for example, well, going back to Doctor Who, if you look at the Doctor Who production codes, it's literally just the order that the episodes are in the series. 1, 2, yeah. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 13. Okay, yeah, it is. 
Okay. But if you look at um, list of Red Dwarf episodes, for example, series 12, episode one was production code three. Episode two was production code one. So it yeah. was three, one, two, four, five, six. So I, I suppose won- it all just depends on the people doing it for that particular show, maybe. Yeah, it's the... Each it's the got its own code. It's the order that they're filmed in. Because if you remember back in series three, the first episode that Robert Llewellyn did as Crichton was marooned because he hadn't quite got the accent right. Right. And he was still trying it all out. So I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, rem- I remember hearing about that. I- and that was, that was production that? code one, yeah. Yeah. So the production code is the order they're filmed in. But yeah, I, yeah, I just wondered if it was maybe like they... They they thought they wrote them and they thought, right, we'll do this episode, that episode, that episode, and then after they made them, they or the production production staff looked at them and thought, actually, that would be a better opener or something like that, so they moved them around. Hmm. Mm. Maybe I don't I know. know. <laughs> I don't remember much of the technical side. I just remember <laughs> yeah. how to make films. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I have got a biscuit. I haven't seen any oh. videos or anything, but I've seen thumbnails on YouTube of the new, supposedly the new Dr. Sonic screwdriver. Oh. Really? And it looks a little bit like a cyber map. It kind of looks a bit... Mm. I don't know what to think. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Post it in the chat. It's It's ergonomic. Well, and just, like, looking at the toy... It does look kind of like a lightsaber. It does. Oh, yeah, that's a like a look. Look. Or a bit like a cyber map. That's what it yeah, kind of bit. reminded me of. I like it. It's kind of organic. I don't know. I don't really like it. It includes the new diagnostic sound effects. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's going to be some scanning. <laughs> Isn't that Although, the do you like how much the the, uh, the 12th Doctor second one was used how often it, that one was used well we don't know how often it will get used yet because yeah, I think that's my point. <laughs> I've, I've seen pictures of Jodie Whittaker holding it so mm. maybe she'll have it for half her run and then who knows who cares <laughs> <laughs> no, that too I'm joking, um... I'm joking. It's, it's, just, it's the usual I don't, I don't even... want to look too much into it because I'm a spoiler-free guy. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even seen the trailer yet, so. When is it even meant to be out? <laughs> the new series. <laughs> I keep on forgetting. September? Question mark. Uh, October, according to Wikipedia. October. Okay. Well. It must be soonish if we're getting trailers, though. <laughs> hmm. I think it's going to start when I'm on holiday. Oh dear. <laughs> oh well. Do you, do you want me to record a video for you? Yes, please. Post it over. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to figure something out. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm quite keen to get a, a laptop so I can watch f- like films and TVs on a, on the flight yeah. and what have you. So <laughs> if I get a if I get a laptop and sort out something with it, like get a cheap microphone. Yeah. Yeah, I might still be able to uh, carry on. <laughs> if not, not long beforehand, we'll just have to do like a whole session of like three in a row or something. Yeah. But anyway, I think you okay. stink. But I also think that's it for today. Yes. Question mark. Yeah, I, I, yes. I can't think of anything else. Nope, I ain't got no biscuits. Oh. No. Nope. Like old Mother Hubbard and her nope. cu- biscuitless cupboard. Jammy there are no biscuits in there. So it's the, bare. This little piggy had roast beef and this little piggy had none. None then roast beef, you heathen. Yes. This uh, yes, it's none then roast beef, then wee 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 wee. <laughs> yes. Next time by? <laughs> Next time by. <laughs> That's that's all good. So I will speak to you all next week. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. I'm Jeremy Fine. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going on the end. That's what she said. <laughs>